Ethereum's longest lived work proof of work testnet is moving to proof of stake. A new beacon chain has been launched today and the merge is expected around June 8th on the network. Note operators, this is the first dress rehearsal. What is up guys? This is Chris with Leveling Up Your Finances and today we are going to be talking about proof of stake and what it is. Um, it was one of those things that confused me when I first got into crypto. What's the difference between proof of stake and proof of work? And you know all that crypto terminology is kind of ridiculous to understand. But anyways, we're going to be talking about proof of stake. Um, just for, This is more for like the beginners that are getting into it and trying to understand what's going on. And the reason we're going to talk about it is because Ethereum has been talking about switching from proof of work to proof of stake for years for Ethereum 2.0. And it looks like we're actually making some progress. Finally. It's been a minute. So it's happening, hopefully, soon. Anyways, so let's just jump into it. So this is a, a news article pushed out to me from uh, Coindesk. Again, if you guys aren't following Coindesk, jump on them, add them to your home screen, add, put them in your favorites. Uh, definitely a lot of good info all the time um, for cryptos, uh, Bitcoin, any of the altcoins, Ethereum, all that stuff. Great points. Uh, they have a lot of good journalists. Uh, all, whatever, go check them out. If you don't like them, let me know. But uh, I do, I so far, I have never had a bad article. Anyway, let's just get to the point. So Ethereum continues to lay groundwork in its uh, hotly anticipated transition uh, to proof of stake. And I love how it says POS, proof of stake, because that just reminds me of, like piece of shit. The network hit a major milestone on Tuesday with its launch of the beacon chain on the Ropston, uh, Ropston, Ropston, I don't know, test network. You guys know me. I cannot pronounce words. I, I English very bad. The uh, Beacon Chain is a proof-of-stake network that runs parallel with Ethereum's proof-of-work mainnet, and it serves as a sort of a practice area for Ethereum's upcoming shift and consensus, consensus mechanisms, which will see the two chains merge together and become a single POS network. Point of shit, or piece of shit. I still I love Ethereum, so I'm just joking about that, guys. Um, so let's jump on. What is proof-of-stake? So again, this is pushed out by Coindesk. This is one of their uh, articles they pushed in uh, December 2020. It has been updated since um, some of it. Uh, I, I've noticed some errors, but whatever. It, I, it's probably the best breakdown I've actually seen in a long time of what proof of stake actually is. It was written by Alyssa H. Um, proof of stake is a method of maintaining integrity in blockchain and ensuring users of the cryptocurrencies can't mint coins they didn't earn. Right? I mean, that's... If they're like... If they mint coins that they didn't actually earn, that makes sense, right? <laughs> so that's the whole point. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more than that, uh, and you'll see. So proof of stake is a method of maintaining the integrity of the actual cryptocurrency, preventing users from printing extra coins they didn't earn. While a different method called proof of work is currently used by Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two largest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. Again, Ethereum's trying to switch over to proof of stake. Ethereum has the plans to mitigate, uh, uh, mitigate, or sorry, migrate to proof of stake to make the platform more scalable and reduce energy consumption of the network. Okay, so that's the way I think it's important. I own a lot of Ethereum. Um, I don't know where you guys are at, but if you do, that's why it's important for us. Both proof of work and proof of stake are what's called a consensus mechanisms, the method by which a blockchain maintains its integrity. Uh, consensus is with is what addresses like double spending problem of digital currency. Uh, if there were any, uh, if there were any way the user of cryptocurrency could spend the coins more than once, it would undermine the entire system, right? Uh, the currency would then be worthless. So it's just, again, it's an integrity type thing. It's a accountability, um, keeping track of transactions, that kind of thing. It's like if you had a dollar bill and you spend it a hundred times, right? So we can only spend your dollar once, right? So that's why it's important. The Bitcoin network was the first to solve this problem with proof of work. Proof of stake, however, has emerged as a possible alternative that some researchers think is both more energy efficient and more secure, though there's still debate around this. Even today, two years later, well, from this time of this writing, still. Why is proof of anything needed? Here's that little thing I was talking about. When Alice sends Bob $1, the manager of a central ledger simply takes one from Alice and gives $1 to Bob. PayPal does exactly that. So cryptocurrencies are different. The goal is not to have one ledger or entity in control of the system, right? So we don't need the banks. We don't need all that other stuff. 
That's the whole point, <laughs> which makes this record keeping a little bit more complicated. Instead of just one lender or leader, thousands of users run the Bitcoin software all over the world. And these nodes ensure that the rules of the network are followed. Uh, and then the sprawling infrastructure needs to be tied together so the software is in agreement. Otherwise, the nodes would just disconnect and be on their own. Uh, it turns out it isn't easy to get these users around the world to agree with each other. So decentralized money uh, was out of reach for a long time. But then Bit, uh, Bitcoin came along. The proof of work, remember, so different proof of work is uh, the innovative algorithm that Bitcoin creator uh, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, came up with making decentralized money without a leader come to life for the first time. Okay, so again, proof of work versus proof of stake. Some argue that proof of work has its problems. Uh, Bitcoin mining has become concentrated. Some groups have become more powerful than they originally intended. And uh, Bitcoin uses um, at least as much energy as the whole country of Switzerland, which is insane. But everything in the financial system uses plenty of energy. So it's give or take, right? Um, to help verify what transactions are added to the blockchain by a way of blocks. So the whole point of blockchains. So you have that list of transactions. Uh, and then it just each block is filled with the latest transaction and then the winner gets the reward. So proof of work and proof of stake each pick a winner. The entity will then create the next block in a different way. Proof of work miners are the participants uh, more likely to add additional blocks to the chain uh, blockchain if they have more computing power and which is fueled by electricity. Right. So in proof of stake, miners are more likely to win additional blocks and if they have more money in. So in other words, proof of stake relies on proof of how much stake each user has. And then critics argue it hasn't yet been proven that proof of stake can eradicate these problems. But uh, advocates think it could be the way forward. And now, I mean, there's other altcoins that are using proof of stake already. Um, so kind of like the frequently asked facts, how does Ethereum's proof of stake work exactly? So the most ambitious, ambitious proof of stake rollout to date is Ethereum 2.0. It's a series of upgrades intended to transition Ethereum from uh, proof of work to proof of stake. And now we're seeing that happen. These special entities and proof of stake known as validators are charged with selecting the, new, the next blocks for Ethereum's blockchain. Validators tie up some of their ether so that can't be used as they're participating in proof of stake process. Similar to miners and proof of work, they are rewarded by taking part in the process. The validators, are, are, the validators are rewarded when they attest to a new block, meaning they accept it as accurate and says it follows the rules. Then they win a block. Ethereum's proof of stake does, uh, does dole out uh, penalties as well. If a validator possesses a block with false transaction or false data history, a significant portion of the validator's stake resources are slashed by the protocol. Further, the validator is banned from the network to punish the bad behavior. Smaller penalties are allotted if the validator goes offline. In the Ethereum 2.0, each validator will need to stake 32 Ether worth about 12,000 at the time of writing to run the validator node. Obviously, this is a lot different now. Uh, that would be like 375-ish. Yeah, 375 at the time so this again was written in december 2020 originally they didn't update that part i just noticed it i thought it was kind of funny because i was like what twelve thousand for 32 ETH? that's pretty cheap <laughs> especially considering it's about almost two grand right now again oh actually it is a it is two grand right now um uh, the proof around there so is proof of stake better than the proof of work it's still up for debate but proof of stake has drawn more than a few critics one reason is that ethereum developers have a quick I have been quick to tout the advantages of proof of stake, but has not yet proven to work because it doesn't exist yet. Again, 2020. Um, but if proof of stake does not or does work, it could be a greener alternative that can accomplish the same goals as proof of work, but more efficiently. So again, this is just one of those mer like part of it. They, they even said it's a dress rehearsal. We'll see what happens over the next few weeks. Um, the whole actual transition still should be August of 2022. Again, we'll see if it gets pushed or not. But basically, that's the difference, guys, between proof of stake and proof of work. Proof of stake is basically just how much money you basically have, how much skin in the game you have. And that's how they kind of do it for their validators versus proof of work. So if you guys have any questions, comment down below and let me know. If you want me to cover anything else, obviously, just you know, comment down below and let me know. 
Um, I'm pretty excited about this because, again, I do have a lot of Ethereum, so just being transparent on that. Um, yeah, guys, at the end of the day, remember to stay awesome and keep loving each other like I love Ether. Both kinds.